Welcome to the ROTC Scholarship Podcast, hosted by former Army ROTC Professor of Military Science, Lieutenant Colonel Retired Rob Kirkland. In these episodes, we explore how to best prepare yourself to obtain one of these valuable scholarships for those applicants who wish to attend a college or university and become officers in the military. The application process can be complex and confusing. This podcast works to make it more understandable. And now, the ROTC Scholarship Podcast. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the ROTC Scholarship Podcast. Um, great to have you again here today. And uh, as a follow up to my previous uh, podcast on medical school, I'm taking another route here to becoming an officer in the armed services, and that's law school. And so uh, today, what we're going to talk about is how you, out of high school, and become a cadet in ROTC, on hopefully an ROTC scholarship. And during your time, in your four years as an undergraduate, you make the decision that you want to go to law school and serve as a lawyer in the Army, Navy, or Air Force, and how you do that. And so today will be a discussion of that and the routes that you can take to make that happen. So law school is, um, in all cases, going out of ROTC, you're going to have to pay for law school. So that's, I think, the first thing up front is there's no scholarships uh, that are available for law school for a person who's graduating and and commissioning through uh, ROTC immediately. Now, when you're on, if you are go on active duty in another specialty, about two to six years into your active duty commitment, each of the services have what's known as a fully funded legal education program or FLEP. The army calls it FLEP. And in that, uh, in those situations, you know, based on your military record and your, uh, scores on your, uh, on your, uh, LSAT, you then, uh, will be selected as one of, you know, several, uh, candidates who then, can go to law school and continue to be serve as an active duty officer and then serve in the JAG after their, after they do your service, uh, after you do your uh, law school and become barred in a, in a state in the union. So, but we're not going to talk about the FLEP uh, program today, or are we going to talk about uh, students in Army ROTC or cadets in Army ROTC that are going to law school while they do army ROTC. So that, that, that is another route where you can have two years of your law school paid for through army ROTC by being a two year, uh, scholarship cadet. Uh, but we're not going to talk about that, uh, route either. What I'm going to be concentrating on today is how you do it going in as a freshman on a scholar, on an, either on a scholarship, army ROTC scholarship or air force ROTC scholarship, or not on a scholarship, and you make the decision while you're in school, undergraduate school, to become a lawyer and go to law school. So uh, bottom line is Army ROTC is the easiest. Air Force uh, comes in second. And Navy, there is no route for Navy ROTC. So it's got to be Army or Air Force in order to make this happen with, with ROTC. So let me talk about Army first, and then we'll go ahead and tackle Air Force. So again, as I said, Army ROTC is probably the most certain route to become a lawyer. There's two different routes to become an Army ROTC lawyer. It's either through active duty with an educational delay or reserve duty. So let me talk first about active duty with the educational delay. So during the fourth year in Army ROTC, the MS4 year, the cadet will request an educational delay there first semester of their senior year to attend law school before going on active duty. So you're asking for an educational delay in order to be able to go to law school. If the cadet 
receives admission to accredited law school, their spring semester of their senior year, the educational delay is almost always granted, almost always granted. Once the candidate commissions as a second lieutenant, they would, they would serve in the individual ready reserve until they complete law school. So then they would go to law, uh, the three-year law school. And during that time, they would be paying for law school and they would be in the individual ready reserve. So they wouldn't be drilling while they're at going to the, their three years of law school on their own dime. So once the officer completes law school and obtains a bar in any of the 50 states, he or she would apply to assess into the Army JAG Corps. So that's an application process where the Army looks at all the applicants. Now, when they assess people into the Army JAG Corps, uh, the person who went through Army ROTC is going to be competing against those lawyers that uh, did not go through ROTC, but still are also law school graduates. And have uh, completed the bar. However, being an Army ROTC gives you a huge advantage. At the present time, the selection rate is close to 100% for Army ROT, former Army ROTC cadets and or ROT, Army ROTC graduates who go through the educational day through law school and apply for uh, to go into the Army JAG. So right now, it's pretty much certain that if you're able to get through that, that you'll be able to become an army lawyer. So that's really um, great news. And one uh, certainly that shows a very much of a pathway forward to become an army JAG lawyer out of um, undergraduate army ROTC. So let me talk about uh, reserve duty as the other option. During your fourth year in army ROTC, the candidate, instead of what this designate, they want to go on active duty, would go into the, would say that they want reserve duty, meaning the Army National Guard or Army Reserve. And that's pretty much certain that you're going to get uh, the Guard and Reserve if you ask if you ask for that. So uh, the officer would serve in the Guard or Reserve while attending law school. So while they're taking the three years of law school, the, um, the uh, candidate or the law school student would drill in the Guard or Reserve. So what the uh, candidate should do is work with a guard and reserve unit in order to uh, perhaps work with a law uh, or a JAG office uh, as part of their drilling that they're doing as a law school uh, student. So there's ways that you can work that with the Army National Guard and Army Reserve to do that. And then for the uh, last five years of their uh, of their commitment that they would have in the Army National Guard or Army Reserve, they would serve in the Guard or Reserve as a lawyer in the Army National Guard or Army Reserve. So let me talk about how much your uh, service we're talking about here again. For active duty, once you complete law school and get assessed into the G Army JAG Corps, you would have to serve your four-year commitment that you took with the Army ROTC scholarship. So that'd be four-year commitment in the Army JAG Corps once you're assessed into uh, the JAG. For again, for Guard or Reserve, you've served three of the eight years that you have to be in the Guard and Reserve as a uh, officer when you're in law school, and then you have five years remaining once you are assessed into the JAG Corps into the, into the Guard and Reserve. Assessment as a lawyer into the Guard and Reserve is pretty much certain uh, if you complete law school and are serving as a officer in the Guard Guard or Reserve. So that is the route for Army ROTC, active duty with educational delay or reserve duty. Let's talk next about Air Force. Air Force uh, is, there's only one route for Air Force ROTC to become a lawyer. That's active duty with an educational delay. So pretty much the, um, the same as, um, or very, very similar to Army ROTC in that you have to uh, request uh, entry in, you have to request an education delay through Air Force ROTC. So this barrier is probably the most difficult one to get. It's basically getting a, uh, a uh, permission from Air Force ROTC to 
not become an Air Force line officer, but take an educational delay and to um, to go to go to law school. So right now, my understanding is that uh, the selection rate for educational delay for law school for Air Force is a, hovers around forty to forty five percent. So that means you know about half are going to get that educational delay and half half are not. So what happens is in order to get entry into the JAG core, the, so, so once you go get that educational and you're the lucky 50% that get selected and that 50% is based upon your performance in Air Force ROTC, your grades uh, are mainly the two biggest uh, elements. So they kind of also judge whether or not they believe you're going to get into law school. So one way that you certainly could perhaps help your case with that is to take an LSAT early uh, before they assess you as an edge into the, uh, where they decide to be, you to get an educational delay in order to prove that you can get into law school. So there's certain techniques that you can work with the uh, Air Force ROTC folks to determine what would uh, uh, make it more certain for you to get that educational, educational delay. So if you're one of the 50% that eventually is allowed to take an educational delay and not serve uh, in, in the Lion Air Force and and to go to law school, you have to pay for law school on your own, just like the Army. And then when you complete law school and get barred in the state, you then have to do the same situation as the Army. You've got to apply for uh, a session into the Air Force JAG Corps. So in talking to the uh, the people who run the Air Force uh, JAG sessions, uh, what they tell me is that uh, it's not certain, but it's pretty much certain that if you um, if you're coming from Air Force ROTC on the educational delay, that you will be assessed into Air Force JAG uh, as long as you know you've, you're barred in a state and you've done you know all the things that you need to do to become to become a lawyer. So uh, just like Army. Just like the Army ROTC graduate, the Air Force ROTC graduate has about the same certainty of getting, uh, be going on the Air Force as a JAG as long as if they get through the program. So again, the biggest barrier seemingly for the Air Force ROTC, you know, is getting that educational delay, which runs at about 50%. But my thinking is that you can probably uh, figure out a way to maybe mitigate some of those things uh you know, some of those barriers of that 50% through your time in Air Force ROTC to make it more certain that you'll, um, you'll become an Air Force JAG uh, officer or get that educational lane and eventually become an Air Force JAG officer. So I think one of, um, I think certainly one of the, another major barrier that I think needs to be talked about by the Air Force is the major out of high school that you got to designate. So keep in mind with Air Force ROTC that about 70% or more of scholarships are granted to technical majors. And this mostly are, is majors with engineer uh, attached to it. So since most technical majors uh, do not you, you likely do not provide a firm foundation for law school, an Air Force ROTC technical scholarship recipient may, in my mind at least, may be disadvantaged and probably should try to uh, compete for a non-technical scholarship out of high school. So I had a candidate this year um, who wants to go the law school route and made the decision rather than apply for a technical major, apply for the general studies major. And so they got accepted on a general studies major on a, on a, on a um, type seven scholarship, which basically pays four years of in-state tuition. And so they made the decision to go to a Texas school, which uh, is uh, all their students they consider in-state who are on a type seven scholarship. So he's having all four years of college paid for in a type seven. And then he's able to major in pre-law in college uh, to best prepare him in order for that, to get that uh, educational life for, for Air Force uh, ROTC in order to be able to go to law school and then become a JAG officer uh, in the Air Force. Okay. And then finally, uh, the worst news is Navy ROTC. Currently, there's no current route that I'm aware of for a Navy ROTC midshipman to attend law school immediately following graduation. 
So if you're going to go to law school, Army's most certain. Air Force, the biggest barrier is the uh, is the getting that education delay. And Navy, there is no route. So you want to be a lawyer, you want to do ROTC and not go through the fully funded legal education program uh, and go on active duty, go Army or go Air Force. And then I uh, want to talk uh, uh, about dual admission programs. And I think this is another uh, important aspect of things here that sometimes is often missed by applicants. And this, uh, what we mean by dual admission programs is that if you're a high school student and you know you want to be a lawyer, when you apply out of high school, consider what we call dual admission programs with, off- with offers automatic admittance to a law school upon completion of the undergraduate program. So one great example uh, in my mind is Nova Southeastern University in the Miami, Florida area, which guarantees admission to their law school. And so it has the added benefit in my mind for an Army ROTC cadet or Air Force ROTC cadet uh, or an Army ROTC scholarship cadet or an Air Force ROTC scholarship cadet on a type one, uh, Nova Southeastern will provide free room and board uh, for you for your undergraduate. So a candidate who secures admission to Nova Southeastern program, as well as the Army Air Force ROTC scholarship, would have zero zero out of their pocket for undergraduate education and and, and have close to a foolproof route to becoming a lawyer in the Nova Southeastern uh, University Law School. So pretty good deal there. And I know there's other schools nationwide that do that, but I just want to put the bug in the ear about Nova Southeastern in that uh, they have these, they have that program to get into law school, but that they also are very, very generous with their scholarship, their ROTC scholarship candidates, and that they provide room and board also as you're when you're an undergraduate. So let me go ahead and summarize here. Um, Army ROTC is probably the most certain route to becoming a lawyer in the armed services, and also has a possibility of serving as a lawyer in the Army Reserve or Army National Guard. If you're accepted. To an accredited law school, it's pretty much guaranteed that an Army ROTC cadet will receive an educational delay. Uh, if you're almost certain to be assessed in the JAG lawyer, either in active duty or in the reserves. Air Force is somewhat restricted by the need to compete for an educational delay. And the fact that a, uh, as when I talk to the uh, person who runs the accession for Air Force is that it's somewhat of a small mission for the Air Force JAG each year. Um, but, um, you know, uh, you have to, and I think in addition to the air force, you've got to secure that uh, non-technical scholarship, which is less, certainly less likely than a technical scholarship. However, once, if you are accepted on an educational delay, the probability of accession into the air force JAG Corps is as high as that in the army. So if you're able to get through the barrier of getting that educational delay and getting a scholarship or studying a major that is non-technical. Um, you know, you probably got a pretty good route of getting uh, an Air Force JAG, uh, you know, becoming a member of the Air Force JAG. And finally, the Navy currently does not, there's not a way for Navy midshipmen to attend law school um, after commissioning. So uh, bottom line is you got to pay for it. You got to pay for law school. Uh, there's no scholarships involved with that uh, out of undergraduate. Uh, it's, you know, just your decision that you want to be, become that lawyer and you don't want to go in active duty as a line officer. You want to, you know, go to law school right after undergraduate and you want to make it happen. So there is those kind of routes to do that. And that's pretty much the summary of uh, how to do it. So if you want more information or you, you want to reach out to us at, uh, ROTC scholarship consulting, more than happy to talk to you more about these routes. Uh, to becoming a lawyer in the uh, armed forces and wish you the best. And uh, we'll see you next time on ROTC Scholarship Podcast. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the ROTC Scholarship Podcast. If you like what we're doing, please leave a quick review. If you have any questions or want more information about ROTC or our consulting services, please visit our website at rotcconsulting.com. Take care and we'll see you next time.